I guess I knock back? You're going to knock back? That's interesting. Okay, I wouldn't have predicted that. You raise your hand, and you're about to knock on the door, and then all of a sudden, ever so slightly, you can see the door handle start to tilt. I reckon we should play out what it would be like if you actually went into a haunted house and tried to play it out like what was a realistic thing instead of what they do in the movies. I'll be like the dungeon master. Aha. And you can make the sort of choices of what you want to do. Sure. So here's here's how every horror movie starts out, right? Uh, you're an author and you have decided to move to a small rural town. Right. This house, beautiful big house, is on the market and you get it for a rock bottom price right you pull in with your car here and you've got three kids and you've got your wife there as well so yeah you've got your sort of complacent teenage daughter you've right. got your supportive devoted wife and two boys yeah the older one's a troublemaker and the younger one somehow can see ghosts yeah yeah, yeah something like that yeah i think so you know yeah that's good Okay, so first, first of all, what are you thinking here? What, what are your thoughts? You sunk pretty much all of your money into it. So I think that the classic trope would be for somebody to not be happy about it. Your wife is actually supportive of you. Uh, uh -huh. She liked the idea too. Now your teenage daughter, she is not very happy about this at all. Uh -huh. um, she had friends back in the old city. You guys lived in uh, Boston, right? let's say. The two boys are fine with it because they they kind of have each other you know sure they're preoccupied with other things they think it's cool um but yeah the daughter is very moody and that causes some conflict right <laughs> it feels like a pretty good run of of like every horror movie starting premise ever so it turns out while you were going to the open homes and stuff there was this locked door down to the basement of course and you haven't ever seen the basement before i would get into the basement you would get you would just jump down yeah if the door is locked to the basement if i bought the house like yeah I'm, I'm kicking it open or something i'm kicking open the basement i'm checking to see if the lights work if they don't work i mean i'll be honest i'd be a little bit spooked but i'd, I'd probably still go down with a flashlight or whatever so first thing that happens is you walk down to the basement Suddenly, lights go out. Oh no, already? Yeah, what do you do? Uh, the lights in the rest of the house are on? Yes. What the fuck? Yeah, I guess I'd try and fix it. I am the dad of the house, right? Mm. Let the family move their stuff in. Let me go do whatever I think is happening, which is probably changing a light bulb or two. Okay, so you'd probably go back upstairs and then try to find like a flashlight or something so you could... Or use my phone because it's 2020 and then try and locate the circuit box. Yeah. Ah. So, okay, you're messing around down there, right? The moment you get the light switch working, it goes bright in the reflection of the old light bulb that you've just pulled out. Oh God. You see that, but just for half a second. I already hate this. I hate this so much. What do you do? I smash the light bulb. I throw it. Samita was like, he does not like it. He's getting spooked by stuff really easily. It's funny, man. Um, there's, there's like all this recording. He's like, oh yeah, man. Whenever I'm, like, I don't watch horror movies because my, I, my hands just get tense and I get sweaty. Right on the ground, hard. I can't sell the house immediately, though, right? Well, you can. Yeah, there's an option. What? That ruins this. No, it doesn't. No, no. We're just playing it out like it's realistic, right? Well, I would literally sell the house immediately. Well, okay, okay, hold on. But we got to play that out too. Like, how are you going to sell the house? It's been on the market for three years and no one's bought it so far, even at a rock bottom price. You're going to be stuck with this house for quite a while, and you've just sunk all your money into it. Okay, so hold on. So first of all, you're going to run away. Yeah, if, I, if I'm spooked enough to throw the light bulb, I'm not sitting back in the basement. Question is, at this point, do you tell your family what you saw? Not the kids. I tell the wife. Hold on. You're just going to have to have a different wife each time. It's fine. Never going to hear me complaining about that. You come running out of the basement. Ah! Right. And then your wife goes, oh, she's like eight feet tall. Of course. Oh my God, honey. What's wrong? I saw a face. I saw a face in the basement when I was changing the light bulb. I saw it in the light bulb. Uh, what, are you, what are you talking about? A face. You mean when you were down in the basement? When I was down in the basement, I replaced the light bulb. I saw a face when I took out the light bulb. Like something was behind me or in the light bulb. Something. How do you know it wasn't your own face? I know my own face. <laughs> you know my face. Do I look like that? The thing that I'm picturing that you can't see? Uh, okay, so who, who was it? Was it a, a man or a woman or what, what kind of face? I think a ghost. I think a ghost. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, okay, well, what do you want to do? I don't know if we can stay here. Dude, it's day one. Yeah, we can't just up and leave, honey. We've just shipped all our stuff halfway across the country from Boston. 
are we supposed to um <laughs> okay we have to get rid of this ghost there's not a doubt in my mind that it is a ghost but i want to take the necessary precautions to de-ghostify this place what do we do then sage some chalk do we do a, a seance a ouija a ouija board are you asking me who we're gonna call Hold on. <laughs> God's sake. Oh, uh, yeah, give me one sec. <laughs> Is that what you would do? You, at this point, you would essentially do a seance? I would call those paranormal detecty people. Okay. I don't know if they're expensive or not, but you know the people who come in with like a TV antenna and a bucket of pickle juice and they just sort of tell you if there's a being in the house? That's, that's really what you do? We could do that. Do you then just make the call right then or do you just sort of ignore it for like half a day? What do you what do? you do? I mean, regardless, they're not going to be there that week, right? So I feel like either way, I'm going to have to deal with the fact that we're sleeping in this, what I'm assuming is haunted yes, house that's right. already, at least for a night or two. Do you make the call now? Do you make it later? Do you just keep moving in? Yeah, I guess I ignore it. We're just gonna have you move in then. Next day. You've moved everything in. Oh, cool. Place is looking nice. We did it. Yep. Uh, you went to bed. Nothing happened. Interesting. Nothing spooky. You're, you're all right. The two boys are having uh, fun. They're running up and down the stairs, having a great time. The <laughs> teenage girl is moody. Yeah, I don't want to my period and such. Yeah, you know, right? teenage girls, yeah. But then this youngest one, right? You walk in to the kid's bedroom. Right. The boys who share a bedroom... Right. As they always do in these things. Before you walk in the door, you hear two people talking. For the love of fuck. <laughs> so you hear you hear two voices. You can hear your son's voice and he's having a conversation and he's laughing. <laughs> you know, kids giggling. Right. And you walk in and you go, Hey, how's it going? Good. You go, Oh, where's your brother? And he goes, I don't know. Who are you talking to? No one. The fuck you mean no one? I could hear you from the hallway. I was talking to the man who used to live here. Yeah, there aren't any light bulbs with you, are there? Uh, what, what are you talking about, Dad? Ah, right. You weren't there for that scene. What do you mean the man who used to live here? Well, he lives in the basement. This basement? Yeah. What's his name? I don't know. He hasn't told me. He wants to play. Uh, listen, Timmy, um... <sighs> the arm is part of the divorce. <laughs> They're not divorced, they're still together. Uh, don't ignore the hand, it's not canon. Timmy, um... What the fuck do I do? What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, what the fuck do you do? What the fuck do I do? <sighs> this kid's gonna get taken to the fucking demon realm and I gotta stop it. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what to do, man. Um, okay, okay, Second. now I call the Ghostbusters. Okay, now you call the, like, you're there in the room and you're calling the Ghostbusters? No, 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 I leave the room. I can't let him know that I know that he knows. Okay, okay so what do you, what do you tell your son? Listen, Joshua, play nice, okay? Be nice to the man. Laugh at all his jokes. Maybe have a drink or two. Okay, dad. Probably didn't piss off any of the paranormals. We're doing good. What do you do this when you go you talk to your wife? Go to the wife again. Yes. Honey, we got a situation. Go on. I'm starting to think that the ghost that I saw in the basement is in fact a ghost. Uh, so what do we do? Well, I'm not gonna elaborate on what just happened with our son so that you still have a layer of disbelief to what I'm saying, but I wanna call the paranormal police. Why, what do you mean, what happened to our son? He said he was talking to the previous owner of the house and that he lives in the basement. What the fuck? That's what I said! All right, well, yeah, we better do something, honey. Come here, come here, come here. And you, Now's not the I'm time! Hide behind you. Now's not the time! <laughs> Can't you see my serious face? The room's shaking! Okay, hold on. I'll get the number for you. So you call the paranormal investigators. Right. Oh, hey, hey, ghost hunters. You haunt them, we flaunt them, or something. Uh, Moshi Moshi, paranormal police desu. <laughs> uh, I need to request your assistance with a... I don't know how to describe it. Ghost, perhaps? <laughs> we recorded this, like, four months ago. I totally forgot. Okay, I'll just laugh at my own jokes. No, no, it's supposed to be spooky. It's supposed to be spooky. I don't know how to describe it. Ghost, perhaps? Yes. I thought you'd use a fancier word, but yes, that's what I'm no, thinking. No, no, no. We just call them ghost. Spook, spooky. Spooky dudes. Sp spooky boys, yeah. I need your help with a spooky boy. Well, we can certainly book you in for a standard exorcism. We have uh, a regular plan and a premium plan. Sounds like you'll need the premium. <laughs> 
uh, especially if it's some sort of malicious ghost, we can book you in in about three weeks. How's that sound? Three weeks? This story only takes place over two weeks. Clearly that doesn't bode well for me. Well, we can try to shift some things around, uh, but we're pretty booked up at the moment, to be honest. Arigato, I guess. And then I hang up and give up on this idea. Yeah, can't wait three weeks. Three, I'm going to be dead by three weeks. I guess I... Yeah, maybe. All right, I'm going to handle this then. All right, what do you do? Immediately, I go online and I find a summer camp that starts in the next three days. One that accepts all three of my kids' ages. Oh, good idea. Get the kids out of the house and to a sensible place. Right. Clickety-clack, okay. clickety-clack. Find something for the yep. boys. Find something for the girl. Get them signed up. Mm -hmm. Pay the down payments. Ideally, something in the next 72 hours. Let's say school's not okay. on. Of course, school's not on. We just moved. It has to be the summer. Throw them in a summer camp. The soonest one for the two boys. They both go to the same camp, so that's super easy. Um, that's actually v available starting this weekend. It's currently Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> See how it looked? I was trying to be really realistic with it. You have to keep to all the same times and stuff. So they'll be, they'll okay. be picked up on Friday afternoon. Um, for the girl, that's a little bit more difficult. There's actually nothing in the next two weeks. Okay. Um, what do I do? Do I have neighbors? Dad, I don't want to go to camp. Stacy, it's that or an extraterrestrial death. Okay. Okay, but that's not that's not a bad plan. Let's say let's say then nothing happens for the next couple days, uh, and you get the you get the boys out of the house. Right. But Dad, I want to stay home and play with my new friend. Ah, fuck, I completely forgot about the B storyline. Uh, uh, have you been playing with him these last couple of days? You guys are having fun? Has he told you anything more about himself, the house, or the rest of the story? Uh, we play hide and seek a lot, but he keeps encouraging me to go into the basement, but I don't want to hide in there. Yeah, that's the first place I'd look at if I was playing hide and seek. You're a smart kid. You get the kids out of there. I think that's a sensible decision. Okay. I reckon, I reckon, yeah, so the kids are no longer a factor in there. Okay. There's kind of some spooky stuff that happens for the next couple days, but now it's just the three of you. Right. You, the wife, and and your, your daughter. Right. Now what? Okay, fuck it. I start researching the history of the house. Maybe that's the sensible thing. Oh, okay, yeah, that's usually how things develop. You go to your local library. Yeah, read up on the fact that the previous owner was murdered with an axe or something. You start reading through the microfiche. Oh, that's that tiny film stuff, right? Yeah, that's right, of all the newspapers and whatnot. Aha! You scroll through and you... See what I mean? Like, no matter what you do, you always end up actually falling in to the same horror tropes because there's not, there's not many routes to go. Do you know what I mean? Even if you try to be super practical about it. And it says something like, Another family dead at the old, uh... Tuntmore. Tuntmore. <laughs> at the, the old, old Tuntmore estate. <laughs> uh, estate. Father killed family with uh, axe before turning it on himself. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> That's like the... Eighth murder <laughs> that has happened there. Friends of the family said they were seeing ghosts. This is the weirdest local singles ad I've seen in my life. <laughs> okay, as if there was any more need, I'm a hundred percent pretty sure. Eighth time? All right, I put up a Craigslist ad to try and rent out the house. Okay. <laughs> Hot single ghosts in your area. Why did you not check this before you bought the house? Well, who would assume that the house had, had was a murder house? No one would. Straight married man seeking other man to rent his house. No <laughs> euphemism. So then what do you do? You live in the motel for a, a while until hope that an ad comes through? I mean, the idea is if somebody pays money to rent out the house, they would need to be paying me enough money for me to not live in a motel forever. Is that realistically going to happen? No. Uh, no, not really, but maybe you could also put the house up for sale and then hope that you could, like, rent it out in the meanwhile. Mm, okay, maybe we... Okay, fuck. How do you get rid of a ghost? I call the paranormal police and I ask how to get rid of a ghost. Okay. I tell them about this article. I tell, tell them about the...
the sort. So you're back on the phone with him. Yellow. Uh, Moshi Moshi, paranormal police. Hello, I'm the guy from earlier. You remember, I'm sure you don't get that many phone calls. I've done some research. Yep. The house that we move into seems to have had a penta homicide in it 30 years ago. I think the previous tenants might be occupying the house. Oh, wow. That sounds quite serious. Yeah. Are you more interested in coming like tomorrow, maybe? Could you give me some advice on how to deal with, let's just say it's confirmed ghosts? Okay. Um, we can fit you in in about a week. Okay. Uh, better than nothing, I guess. Cool. I'll book that. Uh, our prices are $500 per day and a deposit of $1,000. It usually takes up to three days. Is there a better use of $1,500? Probably. I mean, I can't shoot a ghost. Fine. Uh, actually, yes. sir, that's a total of $2,500. Okay, whatever. Yes. I suppose at that point, do you go to a motel or do you go back to the house? Do I have a budget here? If I go to the motel, am I out of money? Like, Luckily, because of the pandemic, there's a, um, a, a discount on a lot of motels. There's not much movement around. Nah, fuck it. We go back to the house. Accelerate the process of this. Okay. Go to the house. Stay for three days. Yep. Observe some spookiness. And then hopefully the paranormal police come before anybody gets fucking hung. So you go to bed that night. You are laying in bed with your wife. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why you chose this day call, but... <laughs> right. So you're you're both, like, going to sleep. Your wife is asleep. Uh, it's the middle of the night. It's quite dark. And then all of a sudden, you hear a sound. Uh... One's knocking on your door. <gasps> right. So... The door to your bedroom. I sort of ball up my fists... And then I just go, shut up, as angrily as I can. The noise immediately stops. Brilliant. <laughs> it looks like those Hulk gloves. Yes. Sumato smash. So it goes quiet. And then you start to drift back to sleep. And then all of a sudden you hear the knocking again. But it's twice as loud. Like it's going to break down the door. Why is my heart pounding? This isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. Um. Maybe you, do you just pull the blanket over and just like try to ignore it? I mean, it, I'm not going to get killed here. I think I know that. This is just the spooky part to make your mind imagine. This is, you're not in a movie. This is real life. Stacy? You all right? What? Did someone say something? Someone say my name? Okay. Get out of bed. Approach the door. You get up and you go to the door. Da, 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 okay. da, da. <laughs> He heard this, like, dangerous knocking at the door, it's, so he just calls out to his daughter, like, hopefully she might come to the door and deal with it. I'll just sacrifice the daughter. You don't hear anything. Then just as you get to the door... I guess I knock back? You're gonna knock back? That's interesting. Okay, I wouldn't have predicted that. You raise your hand, and you're about to knock on the door. And then all of a sudden, ever so slightly, you can see the door handle start to tilt. I wait until it gets to a point where I can judge that, like, it's been unlocked. Like, it's like the, the door the, yeah, the latch. is no longer latching into the wall. And, and I just give it the hardest fucking kick I can might knock the teeth out of my daughter if it's just her getting spooked yeah, or something. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Hey, Dad, I got that bad one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, um, okay. So you see it does keep turning and the latch opens and then the door naturally sort of swing open if it wasn't latched. Uh, <laughs> why? Do, you can do whatever you want. Do you want to peek through the door or do you want to stay where you are? Close it, go back to sleep. You can do whatever you want. I want the story to end. Can I do a charisma check? Maybe I can talk to the ghost. <laughs> I, I say, I say, Stacy, are you okay? What happens? What happens if I yell out for my daughter? Does she respond? Yeah, she responds. Yeah, it's fine. She responds. I think she's fine. I get back in bed. So you're back in bed and um, you stay up for a while. Like you're trying to listen for stuff and you're, you know, you're pretty paranoid by this point. You're getting pretty scared right and then you know do you try to wake up your wife and talk to her about what just happened i mean no point i don't think not in the middle of the night maybe the next day not now okay eventually by like four in the morning you close your eyes and you, you go to sleep the next day you wake up so your wife is sort of up and you know she's making your breakfast and stuff yeah da, 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 da. oh 
Honey, what are all these scratch marks in the door? Did you do this? No, I think it was the ghost. Can't you see my fists? <laughs> it's not a bad line. <laughs> what, what do you mean? I heard a hard knocking on the door last night. I thought about getting up to take a look to see what it was, but then the door started opening, and then I freaked out and went back to sleep. Oh my god, why didn't you tell me at the time? I didn't think you'd care or be able to provide any insight, given that your eyes are permanently closed. Hey, how come you didn't just assume that it was someone breaking into the house? Nah, we're, we're, we're way past that. Someone broke into the house, they scratched on the door, and our daughter's in the other room? Did, you didn't go and check on her? That's what you think happened? Someone broke into the house, came upstairs, and started knocking on our bedroom door? They decided to be courteous then? They were probably testing to see if we were at home or awake. Well, I was both. You didn't even... I'm very disappointed, Johnny. <laughs> I, I can see that things are getting worse. I can see that your emotional state is taking... Oh, oh, is, is taking a toil. Um, uh, sorry, I've got conjunctivitis. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put this house up for rent. We can stay with my sister for a while until we can sell this place. How does that sound? Sounds like something you should have brought up day one, but we'll do it. We'll do that today. Okay. You're welcome, honey. It's uh, it's a big sacrifice. Oh, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll... yeah. Thank you for allowing us to live with your hot sister in this time of need. Mm -hmm. Doki doki. Nice. Okay. So, oh, sumito san, <laughs> you can stay with me as long as you like. Arigato, Monica-san. And here's your wife. She's gone bald from stress. You're at the sister's place. Right. We're at the and, sister's um, place until the paranormal police are available. Let's say that. Yep. Okay, brilliant. Oh, uh, Sumito-san, uh, I am very interested in the paranormal. I'd love to see what's going on at the house. Interested? Interested how? Well, uh, I've always felt like I've had some sort of, you know, thing where I can detect things that most people, I'm sensitive in a, in a way, you know what I mean? I was hoping her husband was a ghost and he could like talk to them or something. Uh, fuck it, yeah, let's go back to the house. Let me, let me show you these scratches on the door that aren't gonna be there when I show you. Can I grab a cop? A cop? Yeah, you can make a call to the police. I legitimately think I would. I wouldn't say ghosts though. I would tell the sister-in-law to keep chill about the ghost situation. I'd tell the police that I think there was a break-in. Uh, Moshi Moshi. Um, I believe there was a break-in at a newly bought house that I bought newly. Could you come check it out? Uh, sure. What's your address? Are you there now? Is this an emergency? If it is an emergency, I'd encourage you to call 911. No, this was a couple days ago. Maybe a day ago. Maybe this morning. Um, but, you know, at your convenience, if you could come see if there was a break-in. Sure, we can be down this afternoon. Uh, please give me your address. 69 Spooky Avenue. Catch you there. <laughs> All right. You agree to meet them down there at the house. Ah, Officer Sins. I'm glad you could be <laughs> here so quickly. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. You call us uh, about a break-in. Yeah. I was uh, in bed, and I think I heard somebody breaking in and knocking on my bedroom door mm -hmm. when I went to check, but I didn't see anything there. I mean, I swear, man, something broke in, dude. You, you don't believe in ghosts, by the way, do you? Just a, you know, a side question. No, we don't really believe in that. Oh, well, you do, don't you, Greg? A little bit, but uh, it's not usually part of a formal police investigation. Do they leave anything behind? Uh, have you seen anyone suspicious in the area, perhaps? Yeah. Uh, a ghostly figure, in fact. Um, I saw him break into the house, and he was definitely a ghost. Uh, he told me so himself. Uh-huh. Right. Um... So now... Do you have a history of mental illness at all? No. <laughs> this isn't working. Listen, the, the break-in was upstairs. Can you guys just take a look at the upstairs? Break, ab absolutely. They go and uh, they check it out. The scratch marks are all there. Seems to be as you say it. Right. Well, um, look, we can take some fingerprints. But to be perfectly honest with you, sir, there's not a whole lot we can do. Uh, look, the thing is, this house is fairly infamous in this town everybody knows that this is the murder house everyone goes crazy and there are probably ghosts i wouldn't 
Oh, well, at least my partner thinks so. Yeah, I think so. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. But um, if I can ask you a question, what exactly would you have us do? Uh, well, to be quite honest, you know, if the ghost wanted to kill somebody, I'd prefer it not be me or my family. Uh, d d d d big pause of silence. So, sir, what would you have us do? Uh, c pff, fuck, that's a good question. That's a good question. Listen, I will put a $100,000 bounty if you can get rid of this ghost. Uh, sir, we can't take uh, money from the public. <sighs> right. American cops not taking money from the public. Okay. Uh, uh, th thanks, I guess. I'll call you if it turns out the ghost is black. Have a nice day, officer. <laughs> I forgot about that line. Oh, holy shit, Samita. <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately, like, they, they even agree with you, but it's like, they just don't know what to do about it. That is real. It uh, bugs me so much that that is almost definitely realistically what would happen. Mm. You go to the house and you, you sort of check it out with your, you've got a crew now. This doesn't. This doesn't make me feel safe. You know what I'd probably do at this point? What would you I'd do? I'd probably say, I would probably call up a couple mates. And I would say, I've seen this movie before. We've got the kids out of the house. Let's go down in a group of like six. And then anything that's spooky, we just start throwing out of the house. We light the place up with a whole bunch of fucking lamps. Yeah, just so that, Minecraft that, mob. That it's yeah, torches everywhere. Yeah, yeah. it's never dark. And... And we just like start going through the house piece by piece, trying to see if, if there's any ghosts, trying to see if there's any anything. You know what? I have a housewarming party. I invite everybody over for beers and shit, and it takes place in the basement. Okay. So the three of you go down into the basement. I feel like in my head, I wouldn't think the basement is like the source of the ghost anymore. Outside of that first encounter, the whole upstairs knocking on the door thing makes me think it's the whole house. Could be. You can go, you can go systematically room by room. Yeah, fuck it. I mean, they, they believe in ghosts, they know the situation. All right, Stefan. Uh, Shit always happens in the basement, dude. That's what I'm saying. The fucking light bulb exploded and everything. Listen, how? Do, uh, what's your experience with ghosts? What makes them want to stick to a house, huh? Was it that they were killed here? Are they angry about something? How do we remedy this? Well, in the movies, it's always that there's some emotional thing or other or a malicious intent, uh, and it lives on after the uh, person dies. Okay, well, that doesn't help me in this situation here at all. Let's start clearing out the basement, shall we? Okay, uh -huh. only if you're providing the beers. Ha 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 I can't believe we got out of that art heist altogether. You clean up the basement. Boom, done. Great. Uh, now what? Okay, basement's clean. Did anybody bump into any spookiness? Nope, nothing, nothing. I didn't see nothing. Uh, oh, all good. Some it was hard. Uh, well, uh, let's make our way upstairs. Uh. Okay, so you clean every inch of the house. It takes you three solid days. And they stick with you. Okay, so at night you go back to your sister's place. By the end, you've like cleaned up the whole house and it's looking fucking nice. Doesn't look haunted even a little bit. Solid. And then when your friends goes, well, now that the place isn't very spooky, do you want to try staying just one night? <sighs> yeah, man. Totally. Appreciate that. Nothing happens during the evening. But then you wake up in the morning and one of your friends is just dead. What? He's just dead. Stefan! He's got... No! He's got like a horrified look on his face. But no axe wound? Um, no. It's like, it's no, no obvious cause of death. It looks like he's died from fright. Right, because that's a thing. Like in the ring, right? It's like that one. I was, I was trying to go for that face with the smudge tool. What do you do now? Call the police, right? That's the, yep. Yeah, dude died. Call the yeah, cops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you have a chat with the police. They can't find any real uh, cause of death. Jesus. Um, I suppose you have to go in. You have to do all the interviews. All that police stuff happens. But now, skipping forward, it's like, well, what do you do now? I guess I talked to the other two men. Hey, what do you guys think happened? How, how, how are we feeling about all this? There's something in this fucking house, and I'm never coming back here again. That's that's probably the reasonable reaction. Okay, so you decide not to go back to the house, right? Yeah. It's all nice and furbished, though. You're at the sister's place. Where's that? There. And you get a phone call. Hello? Uh, hello? Who is this? What's going on? Hi, my name is uh, Andrew. 
uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on speakerphone. I'm just joined by uh, my wife here, my new wife, um, uh, Crystal. And um, uh, we saw your ad for rent at the house. Ah, yes, the house that is for rent. Would you guys like to rent it immediately? We would love to. We've seen all the pictures online. Um, we're ready to move in as soon as this week. Spectacular. They're not buying the house. They're renting the house, right? That's right. We don't want to buy it. We just want to rent it. No, yes, of course. Cool. Yes. I have absolutely no morals about what may or may not happen. You guys can move in this week. Has anything happened at the house? It's all fine. I mean, I noticed the rent is very low. Is there, is there a reason for that? Uh, well, we just refurnished everything, and we just want to get it on the market as soon as possible, ghosts. All right, brilliant. Well, we'll move... <laughs> He doesn't even tell them. God, it's Sumito. I'm just gonna let like these two people die. Move in. Oh, we're so happy. Oh, we're so happy and young. All right, <laughs> then you get a call. Right. Hey guys. Uh, look, I know we're scheduled for this week. Um, unfortunately, you know, we we heard about the incident. It's a small town. We don't think it would be uh, appropriate for us to uh, come and investigate. Um, you know, I think there's some insurance worries there, and um, yeah, frankly, we're not we're, we're not going to come do the investigation. Yeah, no, appreciate the phone call. Didn't think you guys could get even more useless, and yet you found a way. I appreciate that. Thank you. Have a good day, sir. If there's anything else we can help you with, please do it. Let us know. I'm yeah. not doing the survey after the phone call. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. New couple moves in. Great. Here's the question, though. Do you let them die? Do you let these two just move in? That's not the question. Do I have the capability of doing anything else? I think any reasonable person sees this as a situation of me or them. Okay, so you, you let them move in. So they move in. Okay, uh, two weeks pass. Everything seems good. You're getting, uh, you get the deposit, so you get a bit of cash, and the first week's rent comes through. You uh, decide to call them up. Um, hey, how are things going? Oh, great. We love the house. Uh, cool. uh, how many nights have you guys been there now? It's been two weeks. Two weeks? Oh, yeah. You guys liking the place? Have you checked out the basement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all nice and clean. And Oh, it's, it's just perfect for us. Anyway, we, we've, uh, we're going to um, try for a baby now. Goodbye. Uh, okay, uh, okay, uh, yep, yeah, cool. Cool. Ciao. One day passes. Only one day. There must be some serious situation. The story's moving so quickly. Yes, right. Oh. Uh, hello? Uh. He's just on the phone. Yeah, hey, what's going on? It's your boy, the guy who owns the house. What can I help you with? Yeah, look, do you know anything? Uh, have you been down to your property in the last uh, uh, couple of weeks? Uh, no. I rented out the property to a nice young couple. I spoke to them just the other day. You spoke to them yesterday? Yeah. Clear as day. They were calling me, letting me know they were going to have a baby, totally alive and everything. Okay. Well, I think you'd better come down to the station. Uh, we need to have a bit of a chat. Uh, what do you do? Say no? Cool. I'll be there. Uh, wh what is this about? Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, fr frankly, sir, to be totally candid with you, uh, your two new tenants have been found dead and crucified in the basement of your house oh. for the last two weeks. Wow. What a twist! Ow, I did not know forensic evidence was that good. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> he was talking to a dead man on the phone. How's that for a twist? Okay, uh, fuck, okay, this, the thing is, this story's gonna go on forever. It is, and I'll be honest, I'm a little too spooked. My air conditioning kicked on, and I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's return to this in the second recording. Uh, but then we never did a second recording. The end. <laughs>